like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave me a comment. Without further ado, Hyperdelic. Hey kids, it's Hyperdelic, and today we're doing something a little different. Today, we're going to talk about the big snake elephant in the room. <laughs> the, the snake layer, the crowdfunding debacle uh, that we recently just went through. Uh, it's a few days after they were supposed to launch it on August 12th. Uh, I wanted to give a couple of days before or, you know, at, after it to let things simmer and stew and, you know, maybe settle, hopefully, uh, over this whole situation. <laughs> there were a lot of things about the crowdfunding situation that <laughs> I know I wasn't happy about. And I know a lot of people in the community were not happy about. Um, there was a lot of back and forth between a lot of different groups. And we're going to talk about some of that today. I want to maybe pull together all of my thoughts on the issue and put out one, you know, little video because people have asked me and, uh, I, I have talked about it, but I kind of talk about it in different places all over the place. So this is basically just me centralizing my ideas. Um, I'm going to start by saying, I think part of this problem was the voting. And I know a lot of people are just going to be like, Oh, here we go. You know, uh, no, no, hear me out. Um, I, I don't think that there was anything sketchy done by Mattel. I don't think that, uh, you know, there was any kind of cheating or leaning in any direction. Uh, if there was, Hey, I'm wrong, but I do believe <laughs> that Mattel screwed up when they, created this vote, right? They, they created a two vote system that I believe they did not weigh the votes, right? They just took all of those votes in and they were all just equal choices, right? And I don't know if that's a good way of doing this because from what I was able to gather talking to people in the community, you know, most people, their first vote was a <laughs> very different thing than the snake layer. And then their second vote was the snake layer. But that's something that's very consistent is a lot of people had the snake layer as their second vote. I don't think Mattel weighed those votes as like, these are the votes that were their number one picks. And these were the votes that were their number two picks. I think they all carried the same weight. So where I voted for the Fright Zone and the Snake Layer, right? Snake Layer was my second choice. Uh, another friend of mine voted for the Attack Track and the Snake Layer. And then another person that I knew voted for that Tower thing and the Snake Layer. You see the pattern? So that's my theory on where that went wrong. And... Mattel, yes, you guys screwed up. <laughs> Just ask people what their number one is and tally everything else after that. Um, you've, you, you created a very convoluted voting system that didn't need to be as complicated as it was. <laughs> there are some positives about the snake layer, okay? Uh, I, I'm not going to say everything was negative, but I think that my opinion was overwhelmingly in the negative as opposed to the positive issues. Um, the first positive that I'm going to say about the snake layer is that I think some of its features were really cool. Um, I love the idea of the Iron Maiden in there. I loved that, uh, the, the, the throne, the throne was really cool, right? 
Um, the fact that it came with, you know, Lady Slither was kind of cool. Um, and what else? I, I liked the rattle trap, the, the vehicle that comes with it. I like that vehicle a lot. Um, we'll go further in, in depth on that in, in a little bit, but there were a lot of things about the playset to like, okay? But I think that those that stated that Mattel sold us one thing and gave us another thing have a valid point. I heard a lot of the, on the other side of like, well, it did say that, you know, the final product may not be, you know, the exact uh, concept art. You know, yeah, we, we heard that, but we didn't expect how big of a difference I think was going to be there. Um, I want to, I want to point out, <laughs> we're going to do some internet looky loo. I want you to look at this concept art. Okay. Look at this concept art. Like what we expected was what they gave us this, right? This was the concept art that they gave us. Now I need to point this out because not a lot of people seem to want to point this out, <laughs> but I need to point this out. Do you see how over there by Fangor? <laughs> Look at that. You see that? That looks like that. Or at least this half of it, right? This half of it. Yeah, right there on the Lady Slither package. That's Lady Slither. And this is Fangor's package. We got production art. This is actually produced art of the playset, <laughs> right? When I saw that, I was like, ooh, they knocked it out of the park. I'm so glad that it looks like the, the Axel Jimenez artwork. I was very, very excited. When Comic-Con rolled around and, and we got that first picture of what the snake lair was going to look like. Well, okay, no, I'm not going to go with that one because that wasn't the first image that we saw. The first image that we saw were these, these Comic-Con photos, right? And this is uh, Toy News International. Um, this is what we saw. And my initial response was, one, this is not going to be $200, right? That was what my idea was. That was what I had in my head. When I saw this artwork, I thought it was going to be a $200 clamshell playset. I wanted this $200 clamshell playset. I wasn't sure how they were going to get $200 out of this. Maybe, maybe give some kind of a light up feature to the front of it here or something. And maybe some figures. I mean, we saw that the Iron Maiden was movable, right? So that that would have that would have sufficed. I uh, I would have been happy with up to two hundred dollars. I'm sure they could have made it, you know, get there somehow, you know, beef up the material, something along those lines. I don't know, but what they showed us was not something that a fits in with all of our other <laughs> play sets, right? This does not look like Castle Grayskull or Snake Mountain in the least. It's not going to go well next to them. There was an image of it sitting next to uh, the Eternia play set. And I, I, 
I want to say that it didn't look like it was going to fit well. It just doesn't have the same look as Castle Grayskull or Eternia. These colors are way brighter and, and, and a lot more punchy. And I mean, honestly, it feels like there's not a lot going on on the outside of this playset, right? Uh, take Snake Mountain, for instance. There's lots of places to pose your figures. There's, you know, a draw, you know, a, a bridge and a set of stairs that lead up to a trap door. And there's, 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 uh, there's, there's uh, shackles on the front and, you know, a hole that you can climb through and a snake that comes down. I mean, when they, <laughs> they blatantly redid a couple of the, you know, play features from Castle Grayskull. I mean, the drawbridge, uh, and then, the, you know, the the elevator inside. <laughs> that one's definitely, you know, Castle Grayskull. The snake, that's been done too. Snake Mountain has already had something like that. You know, the, 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 the most original part of it was that big snake face on the front, but then they gave it, like, the little baby teeth on the inside and broke one of its teeth, so... It wasn't that idealized photo image of the, you know, the Jimenez playset. This one is the one that we wanted. Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I like the dungeon on the inside. I think that the inside of the snake, uh, snake layer it is cool. There's a lot of fun features. I mean, that dungeon is a little weird. The snake shackles looks like it was executed poorly it didn't look right um what's going on underneath it i have no idea it looked bizarre and nobody really described what the play feature was so yeah um the fact that it comes with a a vehicle that you don't really have a choice on was a little upsetting too like it's just a lot and I, I wanted that vehicle. I want the vehicle. But I don't want to have to buy it at the same time as the playset. That's spending a lot of money all at once. Um, and that therein lies some more of the, you know, problem with this playset. <sighs> I... I I want to bring it back real quick to the box art. And and I know cuz I know that some people are going to be like, "Oh, come on. Just cuz it was there doesn't mean listen. Listen. This has always been a fun Easter egg for us, right? We see it on the box and we're like, "Yes, we're getting it." <laughs> right? You know, you get all excited and you get worked up. When I first saw this, I literally said to myself, Sweet, they didn't fuck it up. They're gonna do that set. You know, when you see it on the box art, it's like, all right, yes, that's what we're getting. Cause I I I challenge anyone to show me where they put something in box art and then produced it, but made it completely different. You know? I'm I'm not gonna say that there isn't any instances out there, but if there are, it is extremely rare. And I'm also going to say that Eternia doesn't qualify because Eternia has been depicted in a lot of different ways over the years. So, I mean, if there's been stuff, I can't really discount that. But we have never seen the snake layer look like this. We've never seen anything in the comics that looked like this or anything like that. Like, this is, I don't know. It's not what we, it's not what we voted on. Um, and it's it's sort of a it's sort of a break in the social contract that we have as a customer to the you know to the manufacturer. Uh, they they have they have made a situation where we're not going to necessarily trust any of their their Easter eggs anymore, and it kind of robs a little bit of the fun, you know, from it. You know, it 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 takes some of the fun out of the collecting. Like, this is supposed to be fun for us, right? So, I mean, 
if it's not what you want, then it's not what you want. It's not supposed to be a duty, you know? You're not supposed to buy it just because it's there. Um, and I think that consumers need to remember that they have a lot more power than they they sometimes believe they do. Um, the the harsh reality of that is sometimes you have to go without a toy in order to speak up. Um, there's been a lot of back and forth about all of these crowdfunding situations. And I got to be honest, like, it feels like on the track that they're on, it's not sustainable, right? They obviously started with a $300 price point and shoved as many features in as they could until they were like, okay, now it's got a $300 value. Um, I, I just, I feel as though, <laughs> I mean, like, look at this. The snake tail thing is right in the, the snake's face and it's practically picking its nose. That's just, I don't know. It's just very haphazardly designed. Um, I, I don't like the color scheme. I don't like the color scheme at all. I think that it was a little bit more muted in the original concept arts. And I think that what they did with the color scheme here was it's just too bright. I don't mind some of the hints of green. I think if the Stone was more of that sandstone, greenish, you know, olive-ish color. Uh, I think it would be a little bit more acceptable, but man, that real deep brown. My wife's not into toys, <laughs> right? She, uh, she doesn't get into this at all other than the fact that, like, I have a channel and she loves me, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, even she said, it looks like one of those Imaginext you know, sets. And to the designers of Imagine X, you guys do good work and you know your audience, okay? I've looked at videos of your toys and stuff like that. Some of it was like, oh man, makes me wish I was like, you know, eight or nine again, you know? This was not supposed to be for little kids. This is supposed to be for adult collectors. And this just isn't for adult collectors. <laughs> like, like, I, I just don't think it is. Like, the windows, how they stand out. Like, there's a bunch of things that I could pick apart. But it would, it would just wind up taking way more time than I think should be spent on the subject. There are a lot of details I like and a lot of details that I don't like, right? So much so in, in a weird mixed way where I'm out. If this is what the crowdfunding project is, I'm out. Having said that, if it went to this, <laughs> I'm back in. I still have an issue with that $300 price point. Um, I, I, I need to, and I will, I'm going to take issue with price point before the end of this. Um, the first thing I, I, I re well, no, you know what? We're going to talk about price point now. I don't understand why all of these crowdfunding projects have to exceed $200. I think $200 is reasonable, maybe even still high. I mean, Snake Mountain was only like 89 bucks or something. It's somewhere in that price point range. I think it was like 86. Uh, I didn't pay that. I wound up paying more because I waited too long. But when I saw this image, I was like, okay, maybe it's going to be reasonable. Maybe it's going to be an obtainable one. Not like, you know, 
$700 after tax and shipping that Eternia wound up being. Because remember, on top of that $300, you're going to have to pay shipping and tax. <laughs> okay? <laughs> the more they charge you, the more tax there's going to be. <laughs> and the bigger the damn set is, the higher the shipping is going to be. So, like, this thing that's almost the same size as the Eternia playset, I don't want that, you know? Um, I also need to take a moment to address some of the insincere gushing about this playset. I'm not going to name names, and I am not going to point fingers at anybody. But as a person that has a YouTube channel that relies on my opinion of my action figures for my audience to continue to retain their, you know, liking and all of that stuff. I, I am nothing if I am not my opinion, right? That's what we do here on, on YouTube most of the time. We're giving our opinions about things. If you're doing a pop culture or, you know, toy or action figure, like, review channel, and you're doing toy content, I think, I think it's important to maintain... your sincerity. Okay. Um, we, we saw when this was rolled out, there was a lot of people out there that were just like, Oh man, it's so great. And they couldn't really put their, I can't really tell you all the things I like about it, but man, is it good? It just didn't feel real. Right. From a lot of uh, folks out there. I think there were plenty of YouTubers that, made sure that they were respectful but honest. And I think there were a few YouTubers out there that, and, and influencers and so forth that, that were just like, man, Mattel can do no wrong, and this and that, it's great. And, you know, if you don't back this, you know, people aren't going to get it. Well, yeah. <laughs> so So it should be. I think as a consumer, the only way you have to influence the market and the products that come out is by voting with your dollars, you know, or, or whatever your currency is, wherever you are. You have to make your money speak for you as a consumer. And sometimes that means making the lack of your money speak as a consumer. Um, Are you going to miss out on the snake's lair? There's a possibility. Are you really? Hell no. You know damn well Mattel is going to produce this snake lair. One, because they need to save face. Okay? People called their playset a baby toy. They gotta save face. If they don't come back with that snake layer, it's probably going to be a misfire on their part. Um, and I got to be honest, like, with the way things are going, I don't want them to be doing a Fright Zone as a crowdfunding. Like, it'll be too big and too expensive. I want a Fright Zone that's maybe $100 max, right? Packed with a bunch of cool features. That I would be down for. That sounds reasonable, <laughs> right? I know a lot of other folks that have way less money to be able to dedicate to that. I get that too. I think Mattel needs to start getting that too. Um, I don't like all the doom saying, and, and, and for those folks that, that were like, well, if you don't back it, we're never going to get a snake lair. 
Stop it. <laughs> Knock your shit off. <laughs> That's not true. It's not based by any fact whatsoever. Mattel did not say they weren't going to do the snake layer. They said it's been postponed. Understand, postponed means postponed. Until they say it's been canceled, postponed it is. <laughs> you cannot fill in the gaps with whatever your brain wants to come up with. Until Mattel actually says what they're going to do, you've got to trust in the words that they've already put out. I'm not saying believe everything a company tells you. I'm saying until they make an official statement, there is nothing official, <laughs> right? So you got to you gotta hang tight. You got to see what they're going to do. Um, like, will we get it again? Come on, you know we're going to get it again. They're definitely going to sell it to us. <laughs> Are we going to get something else before then? Possibly. They may have already been working on something else. And that will get moved up as this gets, you know, pushed back on the block. It's just how production works. I, I think I've covered pretty much everything that I needed to say about this. Um, I've tried to remain as respectful as I can, you know, without not saying my opinion, right? I don't want anybody to feel hurt or, I don't know, even not heard because your opinion may be different from mine or your opinion may be different from what Mattel did. But... I think <laughs> I think it's really important to remember and look at the situation and look at what has actually occurred. Mattel put out a a survey after they previewed a very expensive playset that they were going to put out. They with that acknowledged that they may have fucked up. <laughs> and I think that that is one of the most important things. I think if anything, that sort of restores my faith in Motu moving forward. Right. I think it's important to remember that, the people at Mattel work very hard, right? They're just like all of us. You know, you at your job, you work hard at what you do. I work hard at what I do. My wife works hard at what she does. The guy next door works hard at what he does. Everybody wants to be told they did a good job. And I think it's very important to remember what it feels like when you're told that you don't or didn't do a good job. You miss the mark, you know? You get critiqued pretty bad. I was a graphic designer a long time ago. I kind of know what that's like, you know? Like, as a, as a graphic artist, you know, you throw out a bunch of ideas, and usually the one that you liked the least is the one that they go with. Not the one that you spent three weeks on. No, no. The one you spent 10 minutes on, <laughs> right? That's just life. People have differing opinions. You, you can't expect everybody to think the same way. Uh, the world would not be the beautiful place that it is if we all were the same, right? Uh, diversity is how the beauty happens. <laughs> and, you know... If, you're, if your culture didn't have people with differing opinions, we would never grow. We would never, you know, 
We would never debate. We would never find new ways, you know? So I I think that I think that Mattel admitted they screwed up. And I think that their strategy going forward is the right one. I agree with it. I mean, I know, I'm just me. But I think they're doing a good thing. And I think that I think that they've got a long road to travel between the crazy price for Eternia, the shipping screw-ups, the cutting out overseas customers constantly. I mean, I'm in the U.S. I don't suffer from that problem, but I have a lot of friends that are, are just frustrated as all hell with Mattel, right? Um, I, I don't understand why these crowdfunding projects have to be the crazy amounts of money that they are. Um, I think that the toy industry is hurting its consumers and it's hurting itself in the long run by keeping these crazy, insane prices on these play sets. Because like, if it's not in my budget, I'm not going to get it right. No matter how much I want it, no matter how much I feel like I need it, I'm not going to get it. But that's not everybody. There are a lot of folks out there who have serious impulsivity problems. And I'm not saying that we have to nerf the world to take care of every single disability that's out there. But I think that impulsivity is definitely something that is prevalent in the toy community. And I think that when the the source of that impulsivity doesn't have a lot of respect for our wallets, you know, they deserve to be cut off. You know, I, I hope that Mattel will take the, the comments and, and everything that happened in that survey and they will improve. You know, I hope that we get this Alcala clamshell. I really want it. You know, I really do. But I I hope that I hope that they 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 improve, you know? I hope that they take it as constructive criticism. I know that there were not a lot of nice people out there. And I think that this is this is one of the points that I really want to end on is this is supposed to be a fun thing, right? And I'm not going to do this whole, like, well, you know, you can't pick on anybody. But the fact of the matter is, is that this is supposed to be an enjoyable thing. This is a hobby. It's not a necessity. Um, <laughs> for some of us, it's a necessity. <laughs> but, but it's supposed to be good, right? It's supposed to be that thing that helps us escape the harshness of our day-to-day -day lives. It's <laughs> it's supposed to make us feel better. And I think that I think that uh that there's a lot of harshness in this community. And I just want to plead with people to be nice. Be considerate of your fellow community members and friends remember that people have feelings you know you don't have to agree with somebody's opinion to be nice and you don't have to be horrible to express a differing opinion just remember there's always a tactful way of doing everything <laughs> trust me i found the opposite in a lot of situations <laughs> and learned and have grown. Um, but I just want to say that, like, I love this community. I love the people that are in the toy community. I, I love a lot of our, our funny, quirky, cool personalities. Like everybody's a little weird and I love it. I, I enjoy that. It's a, it's a feast of, of, of fun. I, uh, I hope <laughs> that 
even though we have differing opinions, that we can all be friends at the end of the day and still love the hell out of one another. Um, I just want to thank you all for watching this, letting me ramble for a little while. Uh, this is like the fourth or fifth take that I've done of this, and I've really had to try and keep it way more concise. Uh, this is actually the shortcut. <laughs> so for those of you that have made it all the way through the video, thank you. Uh, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and do all that great stuff. Um, leave me comments. Uh, let me know about that whole uh, box art thing. I want to know. Like, if anybody can find some examples, I want to know about them. Because there's not a lot of people talking about how, you know, Mattel kind of broke trust with us over the boxes. You know, showing us production art and then not producing that art when you put it into actual form. There is nothing about the snake layer that, the, that, that Axel Jimenez designed that looks like it can't be created in a plastic clamshell. Uh, if I am, I'm, I, I, I may stand corrected, but I, I want to say Toy Habits did an article on somebody producing a 3D render of the clamshell for the snake layer. And I, I honestly, it looked great. <laughs> so I, uh, I have hope for the future, and I I hope that our community can, you know, get over this situation. I hope that it doesn't, you know, create any major uh, kerfuffles. I don't like what's going on in the G.I. Joe community sometimes. Man, oh, that is some rough stuff every now and again. <laughs> but anyways... This has been Hyperdelic saying, let's just all play together. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a great one. Thanks. And I'll see you next time. Peace.